Good evening. Welcome to Columbia Heights Public Schools Independent School District 13 School Board Meeting for Tuesday, February 26, 2019. I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask you to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome again. Um, Hala, if you would do roll call, please. Actually, no, it's not Hala, it's Laura now. I Sorry, that was know. last year. <laughs> I'll know. get it right by July. Back. Absolutely. <laughs> Mueller? Here. Severson? Here. Larkin? Here. Lewis? Here. A samurai? Here. Palmer? Here. And Zena Stenvik? Here. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us this evening. Thanks, Laura. Um, our mission statement creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong all succeed. Our core values are community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. Next up would be the agenda approval, adjustments, announcements, and correspondence, starting with the approval of the agenda. Could I get a motion to move that forward, please? So moved. Lauren? Second. And Natty, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Announcements, March 5th at 5.30, there'll be a school board work session here in the community room. Also on March 5th, uh, after the start of the work session, there'll be a school board special call meeting. Uh, then we'll return to the school board, to the work session. On March 12th, uh, Tuesday, 5.30, there'll be an ad hoc subcommittee on community engagement in the training room. March 12th at 7 p.m., regular school board meeting. March 18th through the 22nd, there's no school, it's a spring break. Uh, March 26th at 7 p.m. regular school board meeting again here in the community room. And on April 5th, it's a Friday, there'll be no school, it's a grading day. Uh, next up would be correspondence. Uh, Zina, any correspondence this evening? Uh, Mr. Chair, members, there's no correspondence. Okay, thank you. Communication to the board, citizen employee representatives. At this time, any citizen or employee may briefly address the school board. The board will listen to brief remarks, ask clarifying questions, and if desired, request that the administration follow up. The board will not take action at this meeting on requests presented at this time. Ron, do we have anybody that wants to speak to that? Okay, everybody? Okay, thank you. Next up would be the consent agenda, which includes the personnel report. If I get a motion to move that forward, please. So moved. Is that Laura? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Second. Molly? Mm-hmm. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Next up is acknowledgement of contributions. Uh, we'll start with the motion in a second and then I'll read the uh, resolution. So moved. Molly? Second. And Natty, thank you. Okay, uh, whereas Minnesota Statute 123B.02 permits school boards to receive for the benefits of the district bequests, donations, or gifts for any proper purpose and apply the same to the purpose designated. In that behalf, the board may act as trustee of any trust created for the benefit of the district and for the benefit of the pupils thereof. Therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Columbia Heights Public Schools, Independent School District Number 13, that the school board accepts with appreciation the contributions detailed in the background in the amount of $3,541.15. Under monetary, for the detailed background, we had a donation of $100 was made to Columbia Academy by Allen and Lillian Johnson for the band program, and the donations to the Columbia Heights High School Scholarship Program, uh, John Rockwell, $250, and Peter Harilla, $250. For value and kind, donation of 20 backpacks to Columbia Heights Public Schools by Anoka County Public Health and Environmental St Services for student needs, estimated value of $500. Donation of snow pants to Columbia Heights Public Schools by Anoka County Immigrant and Refugee Committee for Student Needs, estimated value $440. A donation of five iPad packages and cases to Highland Elementary by Donors Choose for Ms. Oren's, Ms. Oren's classroom, estimated value of $1,906.15. And then donation of hats to Valley View Elementary by Hat and Mitten, Hat and Mitten Makers, St. Philip's Church for Student Needs, Estimated value of $95. The total fiscal 2018-2019 monetary contributions to date is $58,610.03. Any discussion, comments? 
Just a thank you. That's really generous. It really is much appreciated. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. There's no other further discussion. Uh, it is a resolution. So, Laura, if you would, <laughs> roll call vote, please. Mueller. Aye. Severson. Aye. Larkin. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Samurai. Aye. Palmer. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, for your contributions. Next up would be reports of members of the board. Uh, board members will report on board activities since the last regularly scheduled, scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Lauren, would you mind going first? Sure, absolutely. Um, since our last meeting, um, I had an opportunity to go to the One Act play. Um, <clears throat> they did a really great job. That is just, if anybody went, it was a really, I think, challenging performance. And I was emotionally moved by that. So um, that was a really a great job that those students did for that. Um, also attended um, the listening session last week. Um, thanks to our parents who came out to talk with us at the listening session. Um, attended the uh, basketball game, uh, varsity boys basketball game. The dance team uh, performed halftime and the pep band also played. Uh, so another great night there. Um, I attended the Columbia Academy PTO meeting and the City of Columbia Heights City Council meeting. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I got to attend the Valley View PTA meeting last week. It was last week, right? Valentine's Day meeting. Uh, so I spent my, spent my Valentine's evening with a bunch of Valley View parents, which was really great. Um, heard a lot of really cool things that are happening at Valley View. Um, most notably that I would share with you guys is they're actually doing a shoe drive. So if you have any like reusable shoes, they don't have to be new, you can drop them off at the office at Valley View and they would love, they're trying to get 2,500 pairs of shoes donated. Yeah, so that's an ambitious goal, but it'd be really cool to see that happen. Uh, also uh, went to the swim sections uh, last week, saw both swimmers and divers, it was very fun. We actually have a a diver advancing to the state competition this weekend. So if you want to go watch some good diving, they'll be down there this weekend. Um, uh, attended a chair meeting right before this and have had conversations with multiple members of the community. Okay, thank you. Qualifying question. The, sh the shoe drive, is that just kids or adults and kids? It's everybody? Okay. All types of shoes. Okay. We also have community drop-off sites at the library, uh, all three elementary So we'll repeat that just for the microphone's sake. Um, you, they can drop off any kind of shoes, um, any, any style or s size, uh, but they also have drop off locations at the library, the? All three elementary school. All three elementary school and the public library, correct? Or no? Hall. And Mergen Hall, great. Thank you. And how long does that go till? March 29th. Perfect. Some closets to clean out at home, so I think I might be able to help you out. Bring condo that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Laura. I really don't have anything to report. Okay. Sorry. Holla. I do not have a report. Okay. You ready? Yeah, thank hey, you. Um, I also attended Varsity Boys basketball game. I had some conversations with Superintendent Kelly and other admin in the district, and I also had several conversations with community members, including some parents. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also attended the play, and I would concur with uh, Lorian that it was a, I don't want to use the word entertaining, but it was entertaining in that the, the kids did a really, really good job with a really, really difficult play, so, and it was very moving, so I was impressed with the kids once again there. Um, I also attended the listening session um, last week and the chair meeting prior to this, so. Lauren. Um, I, I, I did forget, I did do one thing. We had a very short um, kind of teleconference with 916, so it was only about a 10 minute meeting. So, okay. and I took it from my home. Okay, cool. All right. um, next up would be our department updates, looks like. Uh, technology, security services, and operations is up first. Good evening, Chair Larkin, members of the board, Executive Director of Educational Services, Director Stemvik. Um, this evening, um, I have a department update for technology um, will be our focus of conversation. And uh, with me this evening, I have uh, our facilitator um, for personalized learning, uh, Leslie Maher. 
and, and then I have our network manager, Corey Mentling. Um, so they'll, they'll be talking about their given areas um, and as we get into the presentation. Um, our mission statement, Columbia Heights Public Schools, creating worlds of opportunity for every learner, all belong, all succeed. Um, are with our core values of community, excellence, collaboration, integrity, respect, courage, and innovation. So in te our technology department, based off of our strategic plan, we have a philosophy statement around technology. And in technology, we believe it, it, technology is a critical tool for excellence by engaging all students, families, and staff in collaborative and innovative learning that is equitable, efficient, and effective. So our department, um, just to give you a snapshot of, of our whole department, um, um, I have myself as director of technology, as I mentioned, uh, Corey Metling as our network manager. Um, we have uh, two district um, tech people that work year round. We have two help desk support specialists that work during the school year. Um, and we have our two people that focus on technology integration. Um, one um, is uh, Leslie Mahar here, and then Emily Gartner. And then we have uh, a part-time administrative assistant in the area. So now I'm gonna turn it over to um, Corey to talk about technology support services. Good evening. Um, as he said, my name is Corey Metling. I'm the network manager for the IT support team, and I'm going to be talking about what our team does to provide support for the district. Um, so our main goal is to support staff and students in technology-related problems, uh, starting with computers and tablets. We manage about 4,500 devices uh, between staff and students, and we support any problems that arise with general use of those devices. Uh, printers and copiers, we manage about 60 printers and copiers. Uh, our main support for these is to provide access to specific printers and copiers based on need and perform repairs as needed. Uh, phones and fax machines, we manage about 550 phone ex extensions and 11 fax lines. Uh, phone issues range from static on the handset to the phone not turning on to helping access uh, voicemail uh, fax issues can be related to wiring or equipment failure as they get older. Uh, network and internet connectivity. Uh, so with things being so internet based at this time, it's important that devices have reliable network connection. So with most devices being wireless, the most common problem we see here is getting devices connected to the right wireless network. <clears throat> uh, system accounts and email. So all staff and students have computer and email accounts through the district and these accounts affect logging into several other programs. So we, we maintain these accounts and assist staff and students when they have problems logging in. Uh, projector and audio systems. So every classroom has a projector and audio system. So we assist staff as needed when they have problems uh, getting the projector or audio to work as expected. Uh, web filtering and access, pretty much exactly what it sounds like. So we either provide or block access to certain web pages. Uh, door uh, proximity card access. So all staff members have proximity cards that they use to gain access to the buildings and certain areas within the buildings. Uh, we set up these cards and the levels of access for the staff based on their roles and responsibilities. And last but not least, security cameras. Uh, so we schedule the doors uh, with card readers uh, and set when they open and lock for each building um, and make adjustments as requested for special events and activities. We also have about 100 security cameras throughout the district. Um, and we maintain network connectivity to those cameras for easy access by the admin teams when they need it and uh, repair or replace cameras that malfunction. <clears throat> so here's just a chart depicting the support cases that our team has resolved throughout the first half of this school year. Um, so as you can see, most of the tickets that we've closed are computer and tablet based and that's mainly due to the much larger number of those devices compared to the rest of the categories. <clears throat> okay, and so we'll shift gears over to our tech integration. I'm just gonna give a quick overview of the services that the technology integration department offers and then um, talk about some new updates for the school year of 2018-2019. 
Um, the technology integration team's time is split primarily between supporting the instructional use of technology in the classroom and then supporting more the technical side of um, some of our programs that we use to support learning in the classroom. So the first thing we do um, and kind of the dream of what we do is supporting through professional development, coaching one-on-one, -on -one, small group coaching. Um, Emily and I are both certified teachers so we can be in the classroom with the students assisting with instruction. Um, and then also kind of just doing some planning and debriefing with teachers as requested. Um, additionally, we support some technology that we have available to teachers, um, such as the systems Dreambox, Seesaw, Schoology, Google Classroom, and Moodle, and all of those platforms support um, instructional use of technology in the classroom, things that support math, things that support um, digital learning experiences, um, ways that teachers communicate with parents, with students, um, and a little bit of a fun thing we get to do is we get to bring the Google Expedition Kit into the classroom um, as requested by the teachers. Um, this kit uh, is the VR goggles that allow students to do virtual field trips. Um, so we have students from kindergarten through 12th grade going all over the world. Last week we went to Africa. This week I think they're going um, to volcanoes. It's really a neat experience to see students um, from ages 5 through 18 get excited about seeing things that they haven't had a chance to see in real life yet. Uh, and then the last thing that Emily and I uh, oversee is the District Technology Leadership Committee, um, which is a team of two or more reps pre-K-12 um, covering all five of our buildings. And the primary goal of that committee is to increase collaboration and community around technology in our district. I have about five things that we're working on new this year. Um, so we are supporting the implementation of Seesaw in pre-K-8. Um, so we're supporting teachers as they navigate how to best use this communication tool to communicate more effectively with parents um, and engage with families to show the positive things that are happening in our classrooms. Uh, this past summer, we launched our student technology aid program. We had six students working for us over the summer to <coughs> unbox, prepare, enroll new devices. Um, and these are the student devices that our students use in our one-to-one -one program. It's a huge undertaking every year, so these students um, were extremely valuable to that process over the summer and the launch of our successful one-to-one -one program this year. Uh, and we currently have two students working um, during the school year, during the school day as, um, as teacher aides for our technology department and their role is to do in-house repair of student devices. And this allows us to um, do more repairs in-house, keeping costs down and also a quicker turnaround time so that if something breaks on a student device, um, we don't have to send it out, which is a neat thing. The technology committee this year has been working on revising and expanding the technology outcomes for students, a document created in 2013 that is a list of technology skills that we want our students to leave our district with. We know that students will need to be tech savvy um, in order to be career and college ready and so uh, this document outlines by grade what technology skills the students should be learning and so we've been overhauling that, revising it, expanding it to include 912. Um, the document previously was just K-8 and so we've been um, getting a lot of teacher input and the technology committee has been um, really spearheading that effort. Uh, the technology integration team this year has been working on a program called Level Up, and it's our professional development push for the year. We set ourselves the goal that all teachers and buildings will level up their technology integration strategy and or technology fluency by attending at least one opt-in PD session during the 2018-2019 school year. To accomplish this, we've offered a wide variety, as you can see, of courses. These courses are offered both face-to-face -face and online. Our goal with the courses were to model blended learning and personalized learning techniques um, for the staff, and our offerings are entirely based on teacher input. We asked, what do you want to learn about, and they told us, so we kind of have the offerings based on that. And we're also developing some online courses that can be used um, repeatedly that teachers can do at any time, kind of as needed, as interested. The second tier of our Level Up program is the implementation and launch of a very exciting group called the Pioneer Group. This is 22 teachers pre-K-12 um, who have committed to 
really pioneer blended learning in their classes. They're interested in seeing how can technology and the use of technology really make a big difference in my class. And these teachers um, have committed to do a book study. They meet in small groups and one-on-one. -on -one. They meet with their technology integration coach once a month to talk about their blended learning project that is um, something that they've chosen for themselves. Our projects uh, have kind of a range. We have some teachers working on um, technology and station and small group activities. We have some teachers that are flipping instruction to enable them to spend more of their class time face-to-face -face with their students. Um, and we have some students, or some teachers rather, that are, um, let me check my notes, that, <laughs> that are uh, working on speaking and listening practice for EL students. We have some teachers experimenting with self-paced learning. Um, and it's really neat to see the experimentation and excitement around using technology to make a difference in our instruction. So that was it. Um, as you can, as you've heard, um, we have, we definitely have a lot of technology in our district. It takes a lot of effort to support it, and we definitely have a lot of efforts um, providing professional development for our teachers in using it. Um, so I'm very proud of the team and the effort um, in the technology department and what we're doing uh, moving forward. So um, it's uh, a pleasure to present that information tonight. Anybody have any questions or comments? My only comment is how far we've come. So good job. I look forward to seeing what we're going to do in the future. Corey, I'm guessing nobody calls you when things are working just fine, do they? <laughs> no. <laughs> we had to, we put that on the chart, it'd be a low one there. Um, I, I, my only comment, I guess, is, is our expectations as a society and technology is you know, what we expect to be the norm makes your guys' jobs very difficult. So thank you for what you do. Um, we appreciate it, uh, everything you're doing to keep things up and running and having both our teachers and our students able to take advantage of the the technology that's out there so thank you thanks thank you uh, next up would be a department update update for communications <clears throat> Chair Larkin, members of the school board, Executive Director Stenvik. We're very happy to be here as the communications department. Uh, myself having taken on the role of being the Director of Communications as of July 1st, and Lauren Grimes, who is our communications coordinator part-time and uh, does a terrific job. And we're so pleased to be here this evening to be able to share with you how the communications uh, department is moving forward many of the goals and initiatives of previous years. Our mission, of course, is creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner where all belong and all succeed. This evening, our core values that we'll be focusing on uh, that are excellence, collaboration, and innovation. So in a nutshell, what you see on the screen right now is just a list of what we do comprehensively. Our main goal is to find opportunities to promote Columbia Heights Public Schools and the success of staff and students within the district and the community at large. We're responsible for all strategic communications efforts, including publication of all district newsletters, marketing materials, media and community relations, marketing and advertising, graphic design, brand, branding, maintaining the website, video production, event planning, and more, if you can believe it. <laughs> The first recommendation from our, uh, we're, we're continuing to work off of the comprehensive communications plan. And the first recommendation that we are continuing to maintain is to implement a strategic communications program that reflects best, best practices in school public relations. And we've continued to work through our work plan uh, in order to maintain the goals that were established from our, pre our previous comprehensive communications plan and to expand our reach into new areas. The second recommendation is to expand a culture of communication. And this is something, this is an area that we really focus on. Uh, we are uh, making sure that with quarterly meetings with all of the schools and all of the departments that we are appropriately reflecting and pushing out information that's relevant to, um, to our school district and to the community. We work on marketing materials for each of our sites um, and then we, we work on customer service standards as well. 
The third recommendation from the previous comprehensive communications plan was to expand outreach to parents and the community. We continue to do this with the production and distribution of our triannual Highlander Pulse newsletter, uh, which we just got the next issue today, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Weekly press release distribution, along with regular content pushes online, um, and we continue to seek out additional audience members to see which avenues of communications we might be missing to make sure that all the gaps are filled. The Highlander Pulse, like I mentioned, is our annual, or excuse me, our external community newsletter produced three times a year, winter, spring, and fall. Since winter 2017, we've produced six issues and it distributes to approximately 14,000 residences. So that's a pretty big number. Um, and then the community ed catalog. Yes, so the community ed catalog that goes out to all of our uh, community members. This year, we'll start um, having it be produced three times. We're adding summer. So we've always done a fall one, and we've done a winter slash spring one. Uh, but our programming is increasing so much for the summer. We really thought that it would be uh, helpful for the community members to have all of the offerings for the summer uh, collected in one place. So we will have a summer issue this year. We're really excited about that. And you might also notice that our winter spring community ad catalog uh, was a new uh, redesign. Another way we continue our outreach is through the World's Best Workforce Annual Report, which is a collaboration with our teaching and learning department, also distributed to 14,000 residences, which is a great overview of the district successes and um, offerings. We also facilitate regular enrollment marketing, including consistent imagery throughout the year, whether it's on web, social media, or on our digital signs. You might see that, that rocket ship you know, out and about. Mm -hmm. um, we do strategic advertising in the Sun Focus throughout the year. We do community outreach, like having tables at community events. And then we do send postcards and posters that target um, for pre-K, four, and kindergarten enrollment. In addition to these larger scale projects, we work collaboratively with all schools and departments to continue the expansion of creating a culture of communication and to um, continue that outreach. We produce the district's first ever educational benefits handout with our finance and operations department, which outlines uh, programs that many of our families are eligible for, including free and reduced lunch. With the HR team, we've recently produced an irresistible employment booklet, which will be offered to prospective employees and at um, events for recruiting. With teaching and learning, we recently revised the Pathway and Life Skills handout, which was exciting, and it now matches our current brand standards. And we also continue to use social media for general updates, which we'll discuss more in Recommendation 5. Recommendation 4, we are maintaining um, the the work with the uh, teaching, with the, I'm sorry, the security department in terms of creating a crisis communication plan based on best practice, and that work is continuing. So recommendation five was to maintain the integration of social media into our communications program. We continue to increase our footprint on social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Facebook remains our most active platform um, with the district, four of our schools, and one of our departments running uh, pages with positive engagement. We continue to expand our presence on other platforms, learning where the audience is concentrated and looking for ways to engage new audiences, such as prospective employees on LinkedIn. And this is a little snapshot of our social media footprint. We encourage people to follow us on all of the different yeah. routes. Yes, we do. <laughs> Recommendation six is expand the use of video as a communication tool. We've come to the school board with um, a couple of our videos. Our 2018 Alumni of Distinction video was, uh, we produced that, and then the North Park United U.S. Department of Education 2018 Green Ribbon Award. And then we are um, going to be, we are starting to work uh, with a, a person that's part of our district on producing smaller videos with performances, academic students, and staff highlights. Uh, we had received some suggestions that it would be nice to see perhaps some band concerts or choir concerts uh, videotaped, and so we're working on uh, developing that out through our department. Recommendation seven was to maintain refreshing and upkeep of the district website. We continue to work with our web developer to keep the website functional, informative, and on trend. Uh, collaborative work with the technology team is ongoing to review our macro and micro sites to ensure the ADA compliance piece of our website. 
Recommendation eight, develop a marketing plan and incorporate effective marketing branding strategies into communication planning. That's of course an area of focus for us. Branding and marketing is a big part of what we're doing right now. Implementation of marketing and brand strategies through all of the avenues of communication are an ongoing priority of our department. We strive for consistency in communications from all buildings and departments by creating guidelines, collaborating on different projects, and through the introduction of a new brand package that will happen later on in 2019. Recommendation nine was to focus on exploring additional paths to engage diverse populations. Um, on the screen, you'll see four different things listed, but we're always looking for new and improved ways to diversify our audience and connect more efficiently and effectively with our current audience, whether it's seeking out stakeholders through new avenues of communication, like targeted email marketing to community education class participants, um, or increasing our own cultural competency through translation of materials and figuring out different ways to reach um, those we might be missing, we continue our exploration, exploration of communications efforts to engage in all of dif the different populations we encounter. I just want to give a shout out to this pilot uh, program that uh, Lauren has really done a lot of work on with the attendance matters. We know the importance of attendance for all students, regardless of how they're performing in school. And this is an example of how the communications department is really listening and responding to concerns that principals have, the teachers have, and we're using our tools to uh, reinforce the importance of attendance. Be at school every day on time. Thank you. What's ahead? Uh, we're continuing to uh, meet goals of the previous comprehensive communications plan, and we'll be working with uh, establishing an updated comprehensive communications plan for the future years. Thank you. Questions? Comments? It's a new homepage for the website. Does it always look like that with the scrolling? Yep. That's new or not it's new? It's not new. Not new. No. Yeah. The pictures change. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> you guys got a lot going on. Thank sure you. Sure do. <laughs> Anybody questions or comments? So I, I may have missed this, so I apologize if I did. Um, under engaging diverse populations, the first thing you have is pilot programs, attendance matters. I get attendance matters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like totally. But what does that have to do with diversity, diverse populations? You want me to go yep. I think the diversity, not in, not necessarily in cultural diversity, but in different types of parent groups and different family groups we're trying to reach. So with the lower attendance at certain schools, I think we're trying to outreach, we're trying to do more outreach to that specific population and doing some more targeted marketing to families who might struggle with attendance. So with, with the comprehensive communication plan that was developed, mm -hmm. it indicated that as a recommendation and then there were subcategories. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at the subcategories, it wasn't actually about diverse student, like uh, ethnic diversity, for example. It was about other ways of reaching people. Mm -hmm. We, uh, we had a big conversation about that. Yeah. What we're following is what the communications plan that had been laid out mm -hmm. indicated as the yeah. subcategories, and that's what its focus was on. Okay. That, that's a really good question, mm -hmm. and a, at a direction that we often yes. will go with that term, which is where we went, but then we yep. looked closely yep. at yeah. what had been that communications plan, and that's the angle that it took. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. And all this has taken place with one and a half people? I think. Yes. Yeah. You're not a half <laughs> Two person. halves, really. Two, Two halves. halves. Two halves. Half we might look all. Well. Yeah. <laughs> we bring our whole selves to the yes. positions. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you for the update. Thank I appreciate you. it. Uh, next up is the summer programs for 2019. Char Larkin, members of the school board. We're very pleased to be here this evening to present the summer programs for 2019. Our mission, of course, creating worlds of opportunity for each and every learner, all belong, all succeed. That's not only during the school year, but also during the summer. And this evening, you'll hear the core values of community excellence and collaboration as we have worked with many different uh, groups and departments to produce, um, a, I think, an exciting and what will be effective summer program. 
this evening. It, uh, it's an informational presentation to the school board. There are no governance questions. So the goals for our summer program, as they typically are, is to provide reading and math interventions for students, opportunities for high school students to uh, earn credits, English language support, opportunities for fitness, including aquatics, and this year you'll hear about that of all ages, services required by the um, IEPs, the opportunities for enrichment, and high quality child care. So as, as um, Director Stunkel alluded to, um, in pre preparation for launching summer programming, um, collectively we meet with um, a variety of people. So this involves transportation, the nursing and health staff, um, you know, buildings and grounds. We have to look at when our window is going to be replaced in this site and that site, or a, a roof being repaired or whatnot. Um, communications, technology. So there's lots of moving parts with um, with putting summer programs together, athletics, activities, all of the pieces. So we literally all get in a room and um, have conversations around, okay, so how will the students get to Adventure Club after if they need, you know, if they need Adventure Club and who's doing what? So it's, it's a large collaboration, um, but Director Stuglin and I are just the representatives from a larger team. That's right. And the, the collaboration extends beyond our district because we also work very closely with the uh, Columbia Heights Recreation Department. And um, Jake and Carissa and Keith and uh, Jody all worked together to identify what kinds of sports are being offered at different ages. And so you'll even he uh, see that what we present tonight is revised because we just got a revision. So it's an active, an active document. So in community education, of course, our Adventure Club program uh, takes place here at the Family Center, working very closely with Blooming Heights. Our Mini Adventures program, which is a year-round program of preschool childcare, continues. We provide uh, driver's education during the summer. That's a popular time for students to take driver's education. Uh, we'll be offering not only the fitness classes through adult enrichment, but some other adult enrichment classes as well now with having Amatha as our adult enrichment uh, coordinator. We'll also be continuing to offer the water aerobics, lap swim, and open swim time that started this past winter. So we're excited about that continuing during the summer. Activities and athletics, so this is uh, hot off the press. Um, the numbers that, of students that we anticipate, those are guesstimates, uh, so don't hold me to that, but that's what we're, we're thinking at this point. Strength training, both for boys and girls, football, basketball, volleyball, dance, swim and dive, and gymnastics. Um, all of these details are still being worked out, but this is what we just got from the activities department. And from the special education department, students with an individualized educational program um, and extended school year as part of that um, plan um, will uh, be offered summer programming the, during the summer as well and summer support. So you can see um, K, you know, K-12, also early childhood, and then early childhood special ed also conducts home visits throughout the summertime. And then for our general education, uh, last year we um, stopped calling our summer programming summer school and we re kind of reimagined and relaunched to summer encore which allowed us to cast a wider net um, to to a variety of students so again we're looking um, similar to last summer three-week session um, we want to make it a fun and exciting and academically rich program for students so there'll be different themes um, hands-on skills and activities throughout the three-week program and then um, also continue with Summer Encore. Um, because we want to make it a little bit different for the students um, and exciting to entice them to come, we partner with a variety of community organizations. So as you can see, um, Junior Achievement, Summer Reads Vista, those are um, um, young adults who come and um, help out and work in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, of course, our Columbia Heights Rec Department and our Columbia Heights Library, Spark Y, and then there are others as well. So looking at our numbers, um, we anticipate about 300 students in our elementary program. We invite more than that. Um, so we'll, we'd be happy if more students showed up than 300, but given you know, our best guesstimate, we'll, we'll anticipate about that. About 150 middle school students 
and then uh, about 100 high school students. And again, uh, that's really dependent on um, the needs for credit recovery. So that number can fluctuate depending on what, what the specific needs are for the high school students. Um, and then we're looking at about 50 students for Encore Aquatics. Other academic offerings that happen throughout the summer is our um, advanced placement boost. This is where um, our math teacher at the high school has his AP calculus students come in this, a week for a whole week before they start school and they dive right into calculus in the summertime to prepare them for AP calculus. Um, summer seminar is a partnership that we have with our neighboring district, Summer uh, St. Anthony New Brighton. And then our EL home reading program, uh, this is where teachers visit um, once a week, go and visit different homes and do reading uh, lessons with the students and the families. And oftentimes there's multiple students in the, in the home. Uh, parents oftentimes come and, and join um, and have conversations with the teachers. And the teacher leaves a bag of books and other activities to do and they come back and refresh those books each week. Yeah, so the calendar that we're looking at for Adventure Club, of course, that goes throughout the whole summer, starting June 10th until August 23rd, and that takes place here at the Family Center. Same with Mini Adventures, that continues through August 30th. The Summer Academy program takes place at the high school and at Highland, and that's June 11th to the 28th. Our Elementary Summer Encore and Secondary Summer Encore will both take place simultaneously June 11th through June 28th elementary at Valley View, and secondary at Columbia Academy. The summer seminar will be July 8th through the 26th, and that'll be at the high school. Uh, early childhood special education can, uh, takes place at the Family Center, June 11th through the 28th. And then the sports camps that you heard about, that'll take place at various points throughout the summer. And then the high school credit recovery is individualized. So I'm, as I mentioned earlier, um, we are really looking at what buildings are going to be available and open um, this summer. And so sometimes our programs shift to different buildings and at different dates throughout each, each year, depending on what, what the needs of the buildings are and the availability. And we are looking towards summer as it's snowing outside. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, questions, comments, anybody? <laughs> I do have one question. Is the extended school year for kids on an IEP under the secondary summer encore and the elementary summer encore the same dates? Do you know? Uh, yes. Yep. And it's as it's as outlined in their IEP. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if the dates were the same as those mm -hmm. listed. Yes. Uh, um, Dr Director Fry from our special education department is at the table with us and is actually pretty excited about the way that we collaborate with special education. It's part of, not a Second, a separate thought. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? It's nice to see the buildings busy in the summer. So mm -hmm. they are busy. <coughs> Thanks for the update. Thank you. For sure. Okay, next up, item E, uh, the trust edge. Uh, I believe Laura, you're going to be talking about this tonight. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I was. I was hoping that maybe. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Excuse me. Get a little frog in my throat here. Um, well. When I went to the um, school board association, um, I was very, <clears throat> this may be uncomfortable for everybody. Up. Hold on a sec. <clears throat> I don't think I'm quite over my stuff yet. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, that's better. Um, I was um, at uh, the MSBA conference, and um, we were fortunate to have um, David um, Horsager um, actually to be the keynote speaker, and he spoke um, about, um, about trust and um, how incredibly important it is um, to be successful. Um, and the, he offers um, quite a number of, of options um, for everything from businesses, um, and they started, um, MSBA has a, uh, has a, uh, a training session for specifically geared towards school districts. And it's a great way of being able to outline how in the world you're going to be able to create better partnerships. There's a lot of studies um, that, that uh, show that um, the more trust 
the more it benefits everybody. You know, as trust levels go up, productivity goes up. As trust levels go up, um, uh, costs come down. Um, that uh, that there's a there's a lot more collaboration if you feel like you're you're working um, for the benefit of everything instead of you know wondering about what might be behind the scenes you know so there's a lot of benefits to being to being in a very trusting environment um, and I was thinking and I was I was listening to this um, I was thinking about how much it would benefit. Uh, it would benefit you know our students to be able to learn a lot of these skills themselves because it you know it would be it would be great um, but specifically I think that maybe we might be able to explore this as a school board or maybe even as a school district so I did purchase an extra book so if anybody hasn't read it I did purchase it and I'd be more than willing to hand it out and I have an extra copy too but I think almost everybody at this table already has one right so who doesn't have one? No, no. no. I See, I was actually thinking we were going to speak about this at a at a work study session where we could have a little more conversation. Um, one of the other things that um, I also, um, you know, see here's the eight pillars of trust um, experience. Um, the number one is clarity, be clear and unambiguous. Two, uh, compassion, care beyond yourself. Three is character, do what is right, not easy. Competency, stay fresh and capable. Commitment, stand through adversity. Connection, ask questions and listen. Uh, and contribution, deliver results and consistency. Act consistent, consistently. Um, some of the uh, training stuff that they, they um, offer as well is trying to outline um, how in the world you're gonna be able to implement these strategies by boiling it down to um, how do you take action, like almost, what can you do tomorrow? You know, it's nice to say we need better communication, but how are we going to achieve that? What can we do, what steps can we do tomorrow and to, to actually start working on this? And it might be useful for us, but there is a cost involved. Mm -hmm. So anyway, anybody have any questions? Is there, a, the, the, the information that you have there, is that something that could be, um maybe copied and put in the board members' packets to yes. get a chance to it was, take it a was peek actually, at it and see if it's something that we want It wanna. was actually put in the board members' was packets, it? yeah. Okay, I didn't But see I can it. get more copies. My, I just wasn't able no, to do any more extra copies. I'll go back and look for that one. So I don't remember I, seeing it. Was it? I, I don't remember seeing it unless I missed it. It was. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Well, then I guess I would encourage everybody to go back and Overlooked it. take another peek at the yeah. packets. Then. Yeah, sometimes there's so much stuff in those packets that... I think I just saw you were going to be talking, so we waited until... Hmm? <laughs> I said I think I just saw that you were going to be discussing it, so I waited. But right. Either way, I guess that would be my right. next... Oh, my suggestion would be his next step is maybe if you guys would take a, make a conscious effort and... Well, let's make sure we... If we get... Yeah. Oh, yeah. So a while ago. Check the packets and then... Oh, January 18th. Maybe we'll look at give everybody a chance to maybe digest a little bit, maybe look for it on a work session. Maybe we could have a conversation about whether or not we're gonna be interested in pursuing think, it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say that there, there was one other, uh, one other presentation that I went to um, was uh, for um, uh, Denfield uh, High School. It was up by Duluth. And um, although they didn't use like the, the trust edge, um, they, it was very much similar. It was um, how to improve the actual educational outcomes of students by increasing trust. And, I th um, and it was the, uh, the BAR, um, B-A-R-R, -R, sorry, I gotta put my reading glasses on here. Um, the bars, it was how to build trust among students, teachers, administration, and achieve and, and achieve academic and non-academic results. And this could be another avenue that we could pursue as well. They, they had some incredibly great outcomes. Um, and um, it, just, it just increased, I mean, students were, were um, uh, more responsive whenever they were in an environment that they, they felt, you know, not just, you know, um, not just trusted, but felt trusted as well. So I thought that was, that was really good too. And I believe this was actually also in your packet as well. So, although it is, it is, it is really, really hard to read. I apologize <laughs> for that. 
Um, so. I know we're having a lot of conversations about this at the board mm -hmm. level. Could you just, when you include the information again, maybe highlight what you're talking about specifically or the trainings for the students and the staff? And well, just kind of give us an idea. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Yeah, well, that's it. I, It's okay I, if you I, don't have it right now. No, I've, I've got I just it. mean maybe to me. kind of give I us just, an update. Here's on that. the uh, actual flyer for it. Can it be included again? Because January 18th yeah. was a long time ago. Yes. And it's confidential, so I destroy everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, that okay. Not it with me. Slip Try not to hang back on to stuff that long. Maybe I didn't, I might have just, I might have left it in so my your tail. your question, Molly, is yeah. more is, is which piece are you looking at would be student directed, staff directed versus board directed? Well, I, I, I think that it may very well be useful to start. I mean, if we, if we were to do something like this, I think it needs to start either, you know, either it, it's somewhere, it needs to start here. You know, we can't start down here, if that makes any sense. I mean, we need to start at the, to at the top one way or the other. Either, um, either staff or, or board. And I actually believe that it's probably our responsibility. That'd be my inclination, but I'll leave that up to the wisdom of the board if they wanna pursue this. Um, if I'm understanding you correctly, it's, I think what you're saying is um, the part when you were talking about students, that's how they benefit from it. She, I don't think she was talking about doing training for students. You said there's yeah. training for students. No, there, no, that's that that could be a potential. Or did I miss that? Mm -hmm. um, not right now, um, but that is something I did actually have a, um, an opportunity to speak to Mr. Horsager, and he is interested in um, potentially um, doing something that would be more of a student based. He doesn't have anything in place, right? There now. isn't anything okay. in place, but he is looking for some sort of a collaboration. But maybe that's something we can pursue. But that'll, I'm, I imagine, that'll be down a ways down the road. I think we'd have to see if this is going to help to to benefit the district as a as a whole first. So, professional development either at a board and or staff level is what you're. The, I, I believe about. that. Yeah, I, I don't think that I would want to you know delve into this all the way without without seeing where we we want to begin. I think this is this is a collaboration. This isn't a. I guess where I was confused, you talked about Denfield up in Duluth, and it sounded like that was student based, or it was not. That that was that was school based, school and based. they they implemented. They didn't use the the trust edge. Right. They you used the bar method. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of the same principle. But the idea is ultimately is how how are we going to benefit? The students need to benefit out of anything that we do, so we have to uh, you know try to see what we can do to and to improve that. Um, communication and we're looking at com different ways of communicating and outreach and you know I think this kind of seems like this might be an avenue we might want to pursue are there costs associated with it and the information uh, that you have yes. or not um, there is, the, the one that MSBA is putting on is in March they're only taking 30 participants um, and it is uh, 200 and 295 per and that's that's his training, or that's, that's MSBA. That's, an, that's actual training, but it's school. It's uh, the Trust Edge for school districts specifically. Okay. Yes. So it's that's the, his just approved the, training, is what it is. It, he yeah, doing the training, or is the MSBA? Excuse me. Is he doing that training, or is MSBA? I, doing I believe that? that the MSBA is sponsoring it. Okay. Okay, but is he going to be there doing the training? Is my I, I don't believe so. Okay. All right, well, Don, if you want to get that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments about that? Anything else you want to add, Laura? I, I just I just like to explore this. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, we'll move on to our action items then. Um, first up is the achievement integration budget for uh, fiscal year 20. Yep. Mr. Okay. Chair, members, uh, at our last board meeting, you were presented with uh, information on the um, projected allocation for the achievement and integration funding. Um, this funding is directly tied to the three-year plan um, and the strategies that are outlined in that three-year plan, which is board approved. Um, so there, um, it must be uh, you know, allotted and, and budgeted accordingly. Um, 
The achievement and integration funding, 80% um, goes to direct student support. The majority of that funding is um, staff, salary, uh, teachers. Um, the budget um, proposal is really, we, we never stick to that 80%, we always go more than that. So it's about 87% um, towards student support. Um, as you'll see, the funding, um, there was a slight increase in the funding um, of $3,000, but given um, increases in salary, increases in um, you know, costs, it's, uh, it's not much of an increase um, whatsoever. Um, so it's a challenge. Um, there's also the incentive revenue, which is funding that is directly tied to our work that we do with our neighboring district, St. Anthony, um, for our summer programming. So um, I'm here to ask approval for the budget as, as presented. So a motion a second, then open it up. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> Holla, motion, Molly, second. <laughs> Discussion, questions? I, think I just want to comment again. This was brought up to us at our last meeting, and <clears throat> at that point, we talked about how you know this is very directed in terms of where the money can be allocated and how it can be spent. And then it's also you're submitting that to MDE, mm -hmm. um, and then they're also auditing that at the end. So it's um, you know making sure that the budget is in compliance with all of the parameters that are set forth for us. There's a great deal of compliance um, around this budget um, from, from the Department of Education, yes. Anyone else? Okay, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Next up would be the American Indian Education Parent Committee concurrence. Uh, so in meeting with the American Indian Parent uh, Committee, um, each year they are asked to um, vote on concurrence or not on concurrence. And so that means, are they satisfied with the work of the committee, that the district is supporting the work? Um, and this year, the once again, the committee has voted um, for concurrence. So there's a resolution before you to um, approve, <coughs> approve um, this document. Start with a motion and a second, please. So moved. Maddie? Second. Lorian, discussion? Just for anyone watching, we had a conversation about this last last time, um, and it seems like the, the parents were really supportive of all that's happening, yeah? The parents are, um, the, the nature of the American Indian Education Program, both the federal and the state, the funding and the programming itself, it's all parent-directed, um, and so, uh, everything that we do and plan is is based on the goals that are outlined as, from the parent committee. Mm -hmm. and just <clears throat> the, what we're approving tonight is is their resolution, the parent advisory committee resolution, and just there's all the whereas that talks about things, but just the what they've checked the the areas is we the American Indian Parent Advisory Committee issue a vote of concurrence. We attest that the school board and other district are compliant with Minnesota statutes and the school board or district are meeting the needs of the American Indian students. And that's their resolution. They vote a concurrence mm -hmm. and then we'll approve and sign that to move it forward. So just so people understand what's in their resolution. So um, any other questions or comments, discussion? Okay. And this is an actual action, it's not a resolution. Okay. All right. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That motion carries. Um, next up would be the teacher ECFE teacher seniority lists. Lindsay? Chair Larkin, members of the board, Executive Director Stenvik. Um, according to the teacher's master agreement, each year we have to post the teacher. Um, seniority list and the early childhood family education seniority list and give them 30 days to look at and review it. We did that. Um, any questions that came up were addressed. So what was in your packet has been approved by um, the teachers. So tonight I'm here seeking approval of both seniority lists. Okay. Start with a motion. So moved. Molly. Second. Lorian. Uh, discussion. Just to clarify, the teachers have approved their the seniority list. Yes, any questions that they asked, we addressed them. Okay. Anyone else? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 
Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. And then uh, no seniority list. Uh, Chair Larkin, members of the board, Executive Director Stedvik. Again, according to the master agreements for the custodial, clerical, food service, education assistance, and lunch duty monitors, we again have to give them um, 30 days to review their seniority lists every year. Um, that gets sent out. Um, and we had one question arise, and it was just somebody was at the wrong building, switched the building. So besides that, we had no other questions based on the seniority list. So tonight I'm here seeking approval of all those. Okay. Motion to move that forward. So moved. Lorian? Second. Natty? Discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, next up is board topics. I know that's uh, self-board evaluation, which kind of sort of ties into what Laura was, was talking about. Um, <clears throat> last year, it received an email from MSBA, and it talked about um, an opportunity to do an online um, self-evaluation of the board. And I guess I wanted to... Um, ask the board what they thought about it, if they'd be interested. And I think it's a, a healthy thing to do. And if so, I direct the, or we would direct the superintendent to, um, I don't know that the MSBA one, it was in a 2018 thing, so I don't know if it's still available for us in 19, the way it was set up, but maybe look into and see. I mean, it was a free evaluation and it was district specific and there were some things that they, they offered. So I guess if everybody would be okay with us at least looking into that. Um, I'd like to follow that path, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. would be good. Yeah. And then I think that, again, and we yeah. start talking about the trust edge, and I've, I've heard him speak as well, and he does a really good job, and I think maybe taking a look at that, get an idea where we feel like we're at with the board and what kind of other professional development we might benefit from to benefit our students would be a good path to go down. So um, that's all I had for board topics to start with. So anybody else have board topics? I do. Okay. I do too, <laughs> as, but I just thought I'd let you Tom looks at me. <laughs> um, just uh, want to reiterate again um, that March 8th, Friday, March 8th is Performing Arts Night. Um, that is a fundraiser for our K through 12 arts education. Um, so allowing our students to have some of the extras um, through some of this fundraising, um, trips to museums, concert tickets, um, just extra experiences kind of outside the classroom norm. Um, so Performing Arts Night is March 8th, starting at 5.30 p.m. at the high school. Um, it is $10 per person, and your $10 gets you a wonderful dinner um, served by our volunteers. And during dinner, our fifth grade band students will be providing um, dinner music for your listening pleasure. Um, and then we have a silent auction and an art gallery, and it is, it's also the Sister Cities um, Art Contest. Um, so uh, awards will be given for that during the event. And then a performance starting at seven um, that is high school and middle school band, choir, and theater students that are all performing. Um, the, this is our second annual, and this year they have a theme, and so it's Black History Month um, through the arts. And we have 170 students that are performing um, for us on March 8th. So it's going to be an amazing night. Again, $10 per person as a fundraiser. Um, scholarships are available if there are any families who um, are unable to pay the $10. Um, they can contact the Music Boosters, but it's a great opportunity. Hope to see all of you there um, supporting the arts. Did I see somewhere, Lauren, where we expect to feed maybe 400 people? Yes, we expect to feed 400 people. Then you're looking for And help. I'm looking for volunteers <laughs> to help feed 400 people. So uh, if anybody wants to volunteer, they can let us know. Uh, we need some people serving a wonderful chicken and pasta dinner with salad and dessert. So, How early do you need to have someone there? Um, like 4.30. Dinner, dinner volunteers are about 4.30 to 6.30. So Jill will help out. Yes, let me know. Contact her. <coughs> Thank you. Anybody else before <coughs> topics? Just a reminder that conferences are coming up for Columbia Academy um, next week on Thursday and the following week on Monday. And I wanted to put out a reminder about conferences at the high school next Thursday, March 7th from 4.15 to 7.45. Can 
can I can I also say um, on her board topics that I want to wish Molly a happy birthday tomorrow? <laughs> and what about <laughs> us wishing <laughs> happy belated birthday, Laurie? You a happy yesterday. belated birthday. Are you taking my happy board topics? Oh, sorry. So, um, <laughs> it, it's my understanding there's a band concert Thursday night as well. There is a band concert at seven o'clock. If you're looking for something to do on Thursday night, uh, seven o'clock. And yes, it was Lorian's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, and Molly tomorrow. So happy birthday! To and both reminder of you. to their state diving this weekend. If anyone wants to go see diving, I think it's at the University of Minnesota Aquatic Center. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact times. Right. I have one more topic. Yeah. There is a um, special education parent advisory committee meeting next Monday. That is for people that have a child currently in special ed in the district and that information is available online. I believe the meeting is from six to eight. Do you remember? Anyone else? Yeah. I think it's six to eight PM okay. in this room. Okay. Yes. Monday. Okay. Yep. All right. Anybody else? Hearing no further discussion, we'll adjourn our meeting at eight oh six.